The White Bear Area Chamber of Commerce and SCC-TV are proud to present Your Business Matters, dedicated to your business needs. The White Bear Area Chamber is a nonprofit business organization serving as advocates to the White Bear Area and its business community. Now, here is the Executive Director of the White Bear Area Chamber and the host of Your Business Matters, Tom Snell. Welcome to Your Business Matters, brought to you by the White Bear Area Chamber of Commerce. Each month, we interview community leaders and local business owners so you can be informed about the developments in our community. I'm pleased to welcome Sean O'Neill from the Minnesota Chamber's Grow Minnesota program. Grow Minnesota is a grassroots economic development statewide program focusing on assisting our local businesses. Sean and I will discuss strategies to help employees in this tight labor market. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. O'Neill, for uh, joining us today on uh, Your Business Matters. Thank you. My yep. pleasure. What I want to find out from you, first of all, is uh, Grow Minnesota is part of a program sponsored through the Minnesota Chamber of Commerce. Is that correct? That's right, yeah. The, the Minnesota Chamber of Commerce started Grow Minnesota 15 years ago. Okay. And it came out of response of, uh, of businesses in the state uh, feeling like there wasn't an, enough support from uh, for, for existing businesses to help them stay and continue to grow and expand here in the state. Really? So, I mean, there really, uh, before Grow Minnesota, there wasn't yeah, really any kind of a major st like statewide strategy for reaching out to businesses to say that, hey, we really appreciate you being in the state of Minnesota. Right, yeah, there wasn't any coordinated statewide effort, mm -hmm. effort like this. And uh, within economic development, there's a lot of focus often placed on trying to recruit businesses right, into your state. Right, exactly true, state. yeah. And we uh, felt that it was really important to go to the businesses that were currently here that are you know, really the biggest generators of, of jobs and economic growth and find out what they need to be able okay. to stay competitive here in Minnesota. When you say the biggest generators of jobs and economic growth, are you uh, stating that we create more jobs from businesses growing within our own community than going outside and getting a big company to move into Minnesota or into one of our yeah, various communities? Yeah, exactly. That's, that's almost always the case. So typically anywhere from you know, 80 to over 90 percent of, of new jobs in a state will come from the existing business stock. And so a big uh, new business uh, relocation might generate some, some big headlines and that's important as well. But really, the, the existing businesses are the ones that will continue to grow and add jobs over time. Because it seems like when you, uh, when you look at things uh, pers from that perspective, you don't hear much, again, about somebody growing jobs in your own state. But you get lots of publicity about recruitment. Yeah, recruitment that's right. Efforts. And oftentimes it happens five, ten, ten <clears throat> jobs at, at a time. So it might happen more mm -hmm. under the radar. But that really is the kind of organic growth that you see in the state's mm -hmm. economy. Now, one of the one of the terms that uh, the Minnesota Chamber has used with this Grow Minnesota program, and we'll get into more details about what exactly Grow Minnesota is, but you hear a lot about grassroots uh, approach to it. And what do you mean by that? Yeah, so the, the chamber has really made it a, a focus of the program to partner with local chambers of commerce and regional economic development oh, entities. Oh, okay. Uh, we recognize that, that those groups are really going to have a, a good handle on uh, what businesses are in their community, what some of the local needs and challenges are for their existing businesses. And we want to develop that, that partnership so that we can exchange information and really develop a stronger support system for our, our state's uh, businesses in Minnesota. Mm -hmm. So when you, uh, and when you go out and when people, so you would have partners that would go out and then they would make the uh, appointments with local uh, businesses. Yeah, that, that's right. So to give you a little bit of, of uh, context with the program, uh, local local partners as well as the, the Minnesota Chamber will go and meet face-to-face -face with the owners or leaders of anywhere from 600 to 1,000 to businesses each year and oh, okay. try to find out as much as, as we can about what those businesses do, what they're facing, what kind of challenges they're, they're facing to uh, continue to grow their their business in, in the community and in the state, and then use those findings to be able to inform policymakers and uh, uh, more importantly direct 
resources directly to those businesses to help them uh, to, to help them deal with whatever kind of challenges they're they're dealing with. So, if you uh, when you talk to a legislator or legislators, for example, and you can say based on the interviews that we've conducted with um, hundreds of business owners, these are the basic. Uh, uh, these are the basic things that they're looking for in order to make Minnesota a more job-friendly state. Is that correct? Yeah, exactly. So we can we can track in real time uh, uh, trends related to to the state's workforce, to innovation, exports, uh, mm -hmm. new capital investment. Some of those things that are really key economic indicators. We can get a good sense of what's happening on the ground from businesses and be able to track that throughout the year so that we can get information into the right hands of, of policymakers and, and others in, in the state that really need that information to, um, to make decisions. Mm -hmm. And what are some of the things that you're finding uh, from the visits that Grow Minnesota makes? What are some of the yeah. key areas that uh, our, our business community is, uh, is concerned about or is looking for assistance? Sure, well, yeah, so some, some of the findings are, uh, innovation in Minnesota it's, remains uh, very high. So we have a high rate of companies that are adding new products and services in, into the market. And that has traditionally been one of the, the key uh, key factors in, in the state's economic success is to have a lot of homegrown innovation here. So that remains to be very high among the businesses uh -huh. that we visit with. Um, and we also see that companies are, are right now fairly optimistic and are planning new capital investments. So purchasing new equipment, uh, new facility expansions uh -huh, and locations. Uh -huh. um, but uh, there are also some, some challenges, some headwinds that businesses are facing. Like what? Uh, well, one of them is, is co cost of doing business is, is higher in Minnesota than it is in some other states. And yep. um, especially for uh, industries that are very capital intensive or have very, um, are very price sensitive, that can be a, a big challenge to be able to continue, continue expanding in the state. Okay, uh, but you know, workforce has really, I think, risen as as a top, if not the top, yeah, issue we'll, that we we'll hear We'll get about. into that a little bit later because that really is a a, a major concern among a lot right. of uh, businesses that we've interviewed anyway in the past several years. Right. Uh, when you talk about innovation and you talk about uh, some of the things that that might be happening in the future in Minnesota. Uh, how does Minnesota compare with maybe some of the other states as far as being uh, an innovator when it comes to technology sure. and and, and uh, using some of the new uh, aspects that are coming along in the, in that area? Yeah, it, when you look at a lot of those measures, Minnesota uh, tends to rank high uh, okay. uh, across the U.S. So Minnesota last year had was uh, had the fourth highest number of patents per capita of any state oh, in patents, a, huh? a, a, oh, the country, which is you know, one measure of, of innovation. So companies that are creating uh, new, new products and, and processes that they can patent. And uh, we, we tend to rank you know, in the top sure. five to 10 with that. And yeah, last year we're number four. Any, re any reason why you see that what might be happening, why Minnesota might be ranked so high with the number of patents? Yeah, we, we ha Minnesota has a long tradition of, of uh, having a lot of focus around uh, science and engineering and mm -hmm. some of those uh, uh, some of those areas that really do create innovation within uh, within a state economy. So we have uh, both invested in our in our workforce and higher ed systems yes. and have a long tradition of companies like 3M and Medtronic and Honeywell and others that really developed that. Um, that kind of ecosystem we've of innovation. We've got to hope that, that we have new companies like 3Ms and Medtronic that come along. Yeah, and, and that's another there's an, another piece of it. So as uh, technology changes, and right now there's uh, uh, kind of flourishing of, uh, of opportunities within the Internet of Things, within the IoT space, um, that's an area that Minnesota actually ranks very high in globally. Sure. So there's a measure um, that shows that the, the Minneapolis-St. Paul area is third only behind uh, Amsterdam and Tel Aviv in the world oh. of having a cluster of IoT development um, w within a metropolitan That's area. So that is a big opp opportunity for Minnesota in the coming Absolutely. years. Absolutely. Well, Shine, just going to take a minute, and we'll be uh, we'll be right back. I've got a couple quick announcements to make. Uh, first of all, uh, some of the chamber happenings that are taking place. On May 1st at Tria Restaurant, the chamber will hold a special after hours event with the chamber that represents the businesses 
in Anoka County. Attendees will get a free $10 gift certificate and a complimentary mint julep. This event is scheduled to run from 5 to 6.30 p.m. To register, go to the Chamber's website, www.whitebearchamber.com. With me is Sean O'Neill representing Grow Minnesota. And one of the venues that comes up in a number of the interviews relates to jobs in the area. With the baby boomer generation retiring and the workforce shrinking, uh, I can tell you from our experience in this area that some businesses have actually had to cut down the number of hours that they're open because they can't find employees. And I'm wondering if the White Bear area stands alone in that area, or are there other parts of the state that are facing the same challenges? Yeah, you, you put your finger on, on a, a key challenge that businesses are facing across the state. So the, the um, challenge of being able to, to stay fully staffed and find the talent you need to con continue your, your operations and con continue to grow is uh, you know really just a, ma a major issue across industries, company sizes. It's really become a, a you know serious concern in Minnesota. Yeah. Now, uh, it, when we looked in the past and we went on interviews, you, get, you know, healthcare was a top concern. What always is seems to be uh, taxes, property taxes. Those are some of the biggies. But again, the area of of job jobs now seems to be one of the top. Uh, priorities. And when you look at that, is this a concern on every level? I mean, is it a concern for people that are looking to hire somebody that might be a postdoctorate engineer uh, on down the, the line or what? Yeah, for, for the most part it is. So there are some occupations and industries that might face this challenge more severely than others. Uh -huh. So uh, um, uh, lower wage occupations, yep. the job vacancy is, is uh, especially severe. Um, you know, there are certain uh, types of skilled occupations where, you know, that, that is maybe more of a, a challenge than others. But for the most part, it really does cover all industries, occupations, and, and areas of the state. So it's not just kind of a niche problem. Okay. And one of the things that you mentioned were uh, lower wage jobs. I guess those would be kind of the semi-skilled employees that are out there in the uh, workforce. And uh, th those are some of, the, um, some of the industries that we've seen actually a shrinkage in hours. Right, right. Yeah. yeah, so in, in certain sectors like healthcare, uh, retail, food service, there might be certain limitations that uh, businesses within those sectors can have to be able to increase wages or redesign the flexibility of their work schedules or you know some of those things that uh, other businesses might be able to do. So mm -hmm. for instance, if you're a restaurant, yep. your menu is very price sensitive. If you have to increase prices on your menu, that could really impact uh, overall demand and, and uh, yeah. customer flow. And so you might be limited in some certain ways uh, around wages or you know flexibility of, of hours. Mm -hmm. You can't have employees obviously working from home if you're in a restaurant. So right. you, you're working within a different set of- Or retail. Or yeah. retail, the same thing. So right, when, you're, when you have to deal with some of those um, uh, uh, some of those restrictions, you really have to get creative and start uh, finding new solutions to, to find the workers that you need. Okay. When you say the term, you really have to be creative. Yeah. <laughs> 
What does that mean? <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, you know, the businesses that, that we hear from that have been able to, to navigate this, uh, you know, this, this workforce shortage well are ones that are not going, uh, not, not going about it alone. They're finding local uh, um, schools and workforce development organizations in their communities to partner with and to try to find uh, you know, new talent pools that they haven't traditionally had access to. Mm -hmm. So I think those partnerships have been increasingly important uh, in the past uh, several years. Isn't it true though that, that, that some of the schools, you know, if you look at the uh, technical colleges, community colleges, uh, maybe high school uh, apprenticeship type programs that they might be looking to, uh, to engage in, are, are basically uh, jobs that are uh, for skilled employees that are uh, get more get more money when they go to work, you know, than than somebody that might be working as a uh, um, a maintenance worker or somebody in the restaurant field. Right. Yeah. So so those those schools, especially technical vocational yeah. schools, they're going to be centered around certain kinds of skill sets and and you know prepare people for certain type, types of occupations. But yeah. there are uh, you know, dozens of workforce development organizations in the Twin Cities that help train and prepare people that are unemployed oh, are. or underemployed or are looking to get back into the workforce and can connect directly with employers and help build a pipeline of, of candidates into their, into their mm -hmm. organizations. So what are, what are some of the things that the, uh, the Chamber, of the, have you done any programming, for example, uh, to help employers find that hard to find employee, maybe you're someone sure. that needs to hire people that are just semi-skilled or right. unskilled. And how you go about doing that? Has the chamber addressed uh, that specific issue through programming or through webinars and different sure. venues? Yeah, uh, uh, last year we, we held our first uh, Workforce Solutions Forum uh, and, and really focused on uh, helping businesses identify strategies for tapping into some of the hidden talent pools really? in our communities. So folks that are uh, wanting to, to work or get back into the, into the workforce mm -hmm. and are um, uh, maybe working with an employment service organization to get the right training and preparation to, um, uh, to get into the workforce. And a lot of businesses have found that to be a very useful and effective strategy to find workers for some of those uh, jobs that you're talking about. Mm -hmm. And uh, do you find, uh, and again, I don't want to uh, label anybody a certain way, but do you find that maybe bringing certain, uh, having a uh, area where the state is more welcoming to certain immigrants might be helpful in some of the workforce strategies? Right, yeah, so there's, there's uh, a good number of organizations in the Twin Cities and around the state that will work with new Americans to help them really get established well uh, and, and try to navigate employment and um, kind of get all of the, the preparations and training that they need to, to step into a job. So there's groups like the International Institute of Minnesota and, and many others that work directly with new, with new Americans and then can be kind of a link between the candidate and the employer and help be a, a mediating player in uh, navigating that process. Okay, so they have all that, and can employers just contact those organizations, or do they go through an intermediary? How do they how do they do that? Yeah, well, it's certainly a, a business can. Uh, you know, I, I always think that uh, talking with your local chamber, uh, you know, getting connected with the Grow Minnesota program is a great gateway into uh -huh. some of those resources. So the Grow Minnesota is, try, is trying to be kind of a clearinghouse for all of these great resources that are out there for businesses and then help make the connections between businesses and those resources. And um, but an employer certainly can go directly to, uh, you know, if they know about uh, an employment service organization, yeah, pick up the phone and, and call them. They'll be happy to talk with you and find out if there's opportunities to partner. Yeah, and those in, that information is available from Grow Minnesota, and if people want, they can contact our chamber or can contact Grow Minnesota to yeah. find out uh, more about that. Absolutely. So uh, a couple other uh, questions before uh, the program ends here. Uh, you uh, grow have a lot of businesses that you met with. Do you have any idea over the past 15 years, like roughly, how many companies uh, Grow Minnesota has actually had uh, relationships with or met with? Yeah, so over the 15-year the program history, uh, the, the partners in Grow Minnesota have done 
over 11,000 visits with businesses wow. and have provided assistance to uh, about 2,500 businesses oh, in really? that time. So that direct one-on-one -on -one assistance is really a, a cornerstone of the program and there's not a cost or a fee for that assistance. It's the chamber really just trying to take its responsibility of being an advocate and a service provider for the businesses in our state. And uh, so, you know, we're proud to have been able to serve that many businesses over, uh, over the past 15 years. Mm -hmm. Any, uh, any uh, new future uh, venues that the uh, Grow Minnesota program is looking at? I read, for example, something about a connection between different uh, people that are uh, purchasing different products so right. that we can keep some of that in our state. Yeah, absolutely. So over, uh, over 15 years uh, meeting with thousands of businesses, uh, the, the Grow Minnesota uh, partnership has a pretty good handle of, uh, of what businesses are here in the state and what they do. We want to try to bring that information out into the business community and make it more accessible so that if somebody wants to find and do business with a local supplier, that they have an easier route to, uh, to be able to source from Minnesota suppliers. So uh, in the past year, we, we created uh, what we call the Minnesota Supplier Match Initiative. Right. And it consists of an online database uh, where you can source Minnesota suppliers, as well as a variety of other uh, in-person services where we can try to kind of create mm -hmm. those face-to-face -face connections. Yeah. And I know you also have created a uh, job search program too that a yeah. lot of the local chambers are part of. So. That's right, yeah, the Minnesota Job Match, and that's something that's available through the White Bear right. Chamber uh, website or the Minnesota Chamber website. And it's a really low cost uh, uh, new technology to mm -hmm. try to find candidates that maybe you didn't have access to before and to have a tool that can really assess the fit of that candidate right. for your company. Yeah, if somebody wants to get a hold of uh, Grow Minnesota directly, mm -hmm. how do they go about doing that? Yeah, to call call your local uh, local chamber, okay. or you can start by going on the Minnesota Chamber of Commerce website, mm -hmm. and you can see there all of the, the 70 plus local uh, Grow Minnesota partners, and our contact information is there as well, mm -hmm. and you can call us or any of, of the local partners and Great. be happy to help you out. Okay. Well, Sean, thank you so much for thank you. Uh, joining me today. And uh, I'm Tom Snell. Again, thank you for watching Your Business Matters. You've been watching Your Business Matters. For more information on this program or the White Bear Area Chamber, visit whitebearchamber.com or call 651-429-8593.